Hey YouTube, welcome to another video. This is just a quick one to show my e-bike that I built about seven years ago. I did a video on at the time. Uh, it's got the eBay 1000 watt rear hub kit and just the controller mounted under there which I painted black. That's the controller there. Uh, this bike itself I found on a council rubbish pile out the front of someone's house they were throwing it out so I took it home and um, within a week or so when the um, motor kit arrived I converted it to an e-bike so here it is seven years later it's been absolutely amazing I can't recommend this kit enough it's called Voila Mart or something uh, I'm sure it's sold under a lot of different names it's got the power circle written on the hub there so you buy the whole hub all the controller wiring it's basically plug and play you just add your own battery it has the screen up here and so I, I didn't mount the power assist I just have throttle only um, it's just been amazing I would highly recommend it I've had a Bafang kit I would recommend this over the Bafang kit it's really reliable it can do up to 50 kilometers an hour which is more than you need I think Anyway, that's the bike. So I've built a couple of batteries for this bike. One of them was a Samsung 30Q cells. I think that was a 14S 4P lithium ion cells. Sold uh, my mini moto bike. That battery went with that bike. I think I have another video where I built a, a 14S 5P Samsung 25R battery. And that's what I've been using on this bike for the last few years. Just recently I went to have a ride and it had been maybe a year or so because we've moved house. I went to have a ride on it. I noticed the range was greatly depleted on the battery. So I did a bit of testing and uh, I'll take you now and show you what's going on with that. Here's the 25R pack and um, I've done quite a few hundred kilometers on this pack as you can see it's a 14S 5P pack using Samsung 25R cells taken from used battery packs mainly Makita. A few years ago I used to get a lot of used packs and uh, process them, take the good cells, I used to sell a lot of cells and that would hunt, fund all my hobbies, electronics hobbies and different things. So after testing all the cells I found that this this row of cells here was low, the rest are sitting at around 3.2 volts and this this row here is at 2.7. So after cutting off the shrink I tested all the fuse wires on the cells, these are all individu individually fused and came to this one and as you can see there's no connection there so if you look closely all the other solder joints look quite good but this one that's failed you can see it looks like a bit of a cold solder joint anyway so yeah, you can see that fuse wire there is just loose so should be an easy, easy fix. I'll just re-solder that back on and get it back in action. JBD BM, Bluetooth BMS, which has been amazing. Highly recommend JBD BMSs. Very reliable. I've got a couple of them I've been using for years now. But yeah, don't be, don't be afraid to solder cells, guys, because this has been running for seven years and it's done a lot of kilometers and it's still going strong and I suspect that once I re-solder this fuse wire back on it'll be back in action. I'll let you know how that goes. Just going to attempt to repair this battery so what I'll do, I'm just using this soldering iron uh, it's quite a decent sized one, it gets pretty hot so hoping I can just reuse the solder that's on the on the um, already there. So. Get 
some heat into that. Yep, all good. Okay, that's got rid of that. So let's just cut a new fuse. This is what I've been, what I used, I'm pretty sure. And this is just um, for the, the old uh, house fuses. So let's cut, let's just solder the first part on. Just here. The key to soldering cells is just to allow, just to apply only the heat needed to get the solder to flow and then just remove it. So that's good. Now I'll just run it across the bus bar. And that's done. And now, I haven't done this for a while, I had a good technique when I used to make packs all the time, but um, I'll have to go back and watch one of my videos. But I think what I did, I'll cut it off there just so I don't create any shorts. And then if I can get it to lay down across the cell. little awkward like so and then just get some heat on that Okay, I think that should do it. Cut the rest of that off. Just smooth that solder out. I can see what happened. The solder is not happy sticking to this cell. You can see, I don't know if you can see it clearly, but the cell next to it here, the solder flowed really well and for some reason some cells the solder doesn't like sticking to them so much but that's okay now, that's nice, a nice solid joint so let's, um, I'll stick it on the charger now and we'll see how it all goes, I'll test the voltages and um, I'll, show, I'll let you know how it goes once it's all fully charged and whether that's fixed the problem. I've got the battery charging now, you can see already that cell where the um, fuse wire was broken, before I soldered it that bank was at 2.7 volts, now it's at 3, let's see how they all charge up. Uh, as the whole pack charges. So as you can see the cells have all balanced out now. The lowest um, row of cells is 3.5, the rest are around 3.56 so I'm going to call that successful. So I'll get it wrapped up with Kapton tape and a new sleeve of heat shrink. Alright, that's it for this one. See you later guys.